Hello all. Our today's topic is neural networks as associative memory. So before starting uh, the neural networks as associative memory, let us try to just narrate how the human beings are able to store the faces, store the things corresponding to their characteristics or corresponding to their different features. We all make use of associative or association based learning, association based storage, which is also called as content, content addressable memories. Means to say, if we uh, see that a particular person is coming in front of us, then just by looking at him or looking at her, we are able to recall his or her name, address, some special characteristics about him or her, and many more details about him or her also. This all happens because in our mind there is a learned association between his or her look and his or her characteristics also. So we learn by associating the things for human being for different kind of things. This is called the association based learning or associative memory concept. Now in this whole storage human face was coming as input to us or you can say that content was coming to us as input and his characteristics his address his name again the content was generated out of it so content was coming and content was going so is the concept that is named as content addressable memories memories Content was retracted or content was recalled based upon some given content itself. However, both of these contents may differ or may be the same. If the input content and the output content are same, then these kind of memories are termed as associative memories. If they are different in nature, then they are termed as hetero associative memories. So let us look at mm, the board. Uh, so uh, we discussed that uh, we can recall the details like name, address and relationships just by looking at face of somebody. In other words, the patterns are being associated with other patterns or the content addressable memories. Now look at uh, the some pictorial representation of working of brain. There must be an input layer containing m number of neurons if our input pattern contains m number of features and then it contains n number of neuron in the output layer if the output pattern to be recalled is of n dimensions the connections are like this that each input neuron is connected to each other uh, each output neuron that's why this w11 denotes the connection between output neuron number one and input neuron number one then this two one denotes connection between input neuron number two and output neuron number one and in the same fashion these weights are just named and these are the vectors this w1 vector represent this weight vector means all the weights connected to output number one w2 represent all the weights connected to output neuron number one neuron uh, output neuron number two and this w nth vector represent the weights connected to the nth output neuron these are self describable w11 w21 and w1 they really can be very well understood by just by uh, following the convention of prescript and postscript now suppose there are p patterns or we want to learn we want to associate p number of patterns with uh, with we want to associate p number of patterns and each of the p patterns is of is containing m number of features and the output that is expected or that is stored corresponding to a particular dimension contains n number of features means we want to store m featured vector with respect to n featured vector these p number of patterns 
distributed over m number of features can be represented using this input matrix x this is pattern number one and x11 denotes feature number one corresponding to pattern number one x12 denotes feature number two corresponding to pattern number one and x1m denotes feature number m corresponding to pattern number one in the same way pattern number two is represented and up to pth pattern are represented using this input matrix next is the patterns which are expected to be stored corresponding to these are represented using y so again there will be there as there are m input patterns so there will be m there will be as there are p input patterns to be stored so it require p output patterns also these p output patterns e where each is of dimension n can be represented using y matrix so this is your uh, output corresponding to the first input pattern y11 denote feature number one of output pattern number one y12 denote feature number two of output pattern number one this y1 and denote feature number n that was stored corresponding to pattern number one in this way this matrix contains p number of patterns represented as n featured vector the pattern storage and the pattern recall are learned by the weight matrix or the weights of these edges so these are going to be responsible for storage as well as for recalling the patterns now let us uh, take an example to understand how these weights are to be adjusted how these weights are to be uh, learned from the given input and output patterns which are to be stored using the associative memories assume that initially the weights are all zero now uh, pick any uh, pattern that is represented using vector x and as as your input patterns are distributed over m number of features so it will contain n number m number of entries x11 means first feature of pattern number one second feature of pattern one pattern number one and mth feature of pattern number one corresponding to this x there is a y also that is stored here so corresponding to this x y that is expected to be uh, generated as recalled pattern is represented using this vector y where y11 is means uh, a first feature corresponding to the output of first pattern second feature corresponding to the output of first pattern and the nth output nth feature corresponding to the output of first pattern so these are two representation for the patterns to be stored and pattern to be recalled now the weight values corresponding to the storage of these the storage of this x pattern will be given by transpose of x vector multiplied by the vector y x is given by this so its, it's transpose will be uh, will become the column uh, matrix of uh, one column and m rows and y remains the same that is equal to this so if we multiply if we find out product of these then it will be uh, going to be x11 multiplied by y11 x11 multiplied by y12 and x11 multiplied by y1n and now pick up the second row and this will be going to be this and uh, just by repeating the process we can achieve this matrix which is of dimension m into n now try to observe the number of weights which are presented which are you can say there in this network uh, these there are m number of neurons and in the input layer n number of neurons in the output layer each neuron of the input is connected to the output layer so it means there are going to be m into n number of total edges present in this network all those edges are to be weighted using this weight matrix so this is going to be weight weight matrix corresponding to a single w now I try to further observe this matrix this weight uh, uh, vector w1 that is w11 then w21 then wm1 is given by your first column 
means this column will give you a W1, this will give you a W of 2 and this will be giving you a W of N. So these are the weights to be assigned to this W1, W2 and WNH. So our overall aim is to calculate, is to obtain this vector W as there are m number of patterns as sorry as there are p number of patterns so this matrix will be calculated for first pattern p first pattern uh, then it will be calculated for the second pattern then it will be calculated for the third pattern as well it means we will be calculating the weight matrix for first pattern then weight matrix for the second pattern then third pattern and then up to pth pattern we are going to calculate their matrices that was just shown before after getting these matrices we are going to add them all as we want to obtain the matrix w which is our final matrix and will be used to recall or to extract back the stored pattern within the neural network. So this is the overall concept of your associative memories. Further, just to repeat, when W was stored, suppose when triangle was stored corresponding to the uh, triangle, then these networks are called auto associative memories when corresponding to a triangle a different pattern say rectangle is stored then these are termed as hetero associative memories the example we have just looked here falls under hetero associative memories but the mechanism of learning mechanism of adjusting the weights remains same in auto associative memories the only difference is that in the input layer if there are m neurons then in case of auto associative the output layer will also contain m number of neurons rest all the part will remain the same in the next part in this associative memory is our bidirectional memories as the name suggests that there are bidirectional edges means the edges which were uh, shown in the auto, auto associative or hetero associative like this these were unidirectional in nature but in bidirectional uh, memories these are these all edges are bidirectional in nature means to say if triangle was stored as rectangle and if we are able to recall this rectangle corresponding to the triangle then along with this operation we should also be able to extract this triangle if we give rectangle as input in case of bidirectional associative memories we can recall the output corresponding to a particular input pattern as well as we can extract the input if we are provided with the output pattern it means it works in both ways while extracting uh, the output pattern corresponding to input we will go in this direction and while extracting the input from a given output we go from this direction it means here if weight matrix is represented using w then in the reverse direction the weight matrix will become its transpose this will become its transpose in the next lecture we will try to traverse, we will uh, try to trace uh, the auto-associative, hetero-associative 
and also we'll try to better understand this by directional associative memories in detail and we'll try to trace uh, one example of BAM also.